Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you're well. And welcome to the first video in the series of Laravel Fundamentals. So I'm just gonna go over the structure of a Laravel project. So I'm gonna kinda go over the folders and items to the left. Okay, so over here on the left, we're gonna take a look at just kind of the bottom up and we'll jump in between files when we need to. So right here, the very bottom file is called the Webpack file. And this is used for like asset creation. So when you want to, you know, add new things to your project, create new directories and compile your front end assets, uh, this is what this folder is for. Barbell uses Webpack to do any compilation of any front end assets. Next is the standard readme. So basically, just gives you some information about the Laravel project, uh, the community, and any kind of sponsors and partners and things like that. Uh, the next one up is PHP unit. If you are doing any kind of testing your project, it'd be related to this folder over here where you have feature tests, unit tests. So you could be using PHP unit or you could be using something like PEST. Uh, we'll get into testing in a later point too in this fundamentals. And this is the package.json file. So basically think of this as where you would install packages or dependencies uh, using NPM. So these two go hand in hand. The composer.lock file allows you to um, mimic whatever is here within the composer file. So the composer.json file, it's a PHP dependency. So you guys can check out that video on composer to see how that goes. So the artisan file revolves around the artisan commands and stuff like that. And this is where you run like the auto loader. And from here, uh, you'll notice there's another folder up here called bootstrap. So a lot of your CLI commands will be ran around this folder and around this file. Um, we won't get into this uh, right now, but if you wanted to do some continuous integration uh, with your project and you know have some automation, um, you can do some configuration around this file as well. All right, the next two files kind of follow around GitHub and Git as well, um, actually Git in particular. So the Git attributes file really um, pretty much provides a simple text file that gives attributes to path names. So in the beginning, you don't have to worry about this too much. Um, the Git ignore file um, is something that you might want to pay attention to when you first start up a project or working in teams or something like that. Um, Laravel out of the box has some default files that it ignores. So for instance, like the nodes module file is not here right now because we haven't run NPM or install that but it does have a large set of files and directories within there. And in a project, you wanna probably ignore those things so that you don't have this excess uh, kind of bloat to your project. The next two files are uh, fairly important is the .env example and the .env file. So this is where you would configure the environment variables or the environment attributes for your Laravel project. And also you can have multiple environment files. I think by default, it comes with an example.env file. So in case this file got deleted or you didn't, you know, it wasn't there. If I pulled down a project or something like that, they wouldn't actually include this. You would use the example.env file and you can create a, a testing.env file. You can basically create an environment file for whatever situation you want to work with. So um, these two are the examples that they give you. Uh, this is the one that you put to production and you can add whatever ones you need to do uh, with your project moving forward. I'll skip over the editor config file. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then over here, um, this is the vendors folder. So inside of Laravel, there are a lot of vendors or a lot of dependencies, things that have been pulled into the project that um, actually make Laravel does what it does. So this is where you'll find some of those things. Um, you'll even find classes and things that are specific to Laravel inside of the Laravel directory, inside of the framework. And depending on what you have in here, you'll find how things are structured, how it's made, and maybe more intuitively, how something or function or class works. So uh, that's in the vendor directory. Uh, we've already covered tests, so we'll skip that one. Moving along to storage. So this is where within your application, you would store things or could store things within your application if you weren't storing them uh, somewhere else on a third party like Amazon or, or some other third party storage place. Uh, the trick is you have to create a symlink around this thing for this to work. We'll get to that at a later point uh, down here is some of the framework things. So this is where your views are seen or cached. So in the views directory, this is where some of the views are stored within the application that you've already looked at that are cached. Over here is where some of your PHP unit testing 
would be stored. Um, sessions, if you're using things like cookies or sessions, will be here. Your framework or cache, uh, any kind of logging will also be stored in the storage directory. So when we get to logs, you'll see where the logs are for things that you've done, any errors or things that have happened. So that is pretty much the storage directory. Uh, on next to the routes directory. So this is where Laravel keeps track of all of your routes and routes are basically, uh, you know, like route definitions for your application. So by default, there's uh, four. If you're working with APIs, then this is where your API routes would be stored. Uh, if you're dealing with channels and you have to register any kind of broadcasting or event, you may want to register some routes along this uh, channel or this, this file. Um, mostly if you're doing, you know, web related things, you will have your web route here. And by default, there's already a route created for you. And over here is the, uh, console routes. So this is where you would define any console based, uh, route definitions inside of your project. The next folder that we'll take a look at will be the resources folder. Uh, you can think of this resources folder as where it holds your assets or any kind of front end thing. So depending if you added some kind of functionality to your Webpack file, uh, these things would be provided inside of this routes directory. So you could create additional directories and they would get placed in here. So whether they're images, icons, something along those lines, additional JS files or libraries, um, they end up in here. Uh, your views are pretty much where you'd have inside of this folder some layouts or components or something along those lines, and it would end up in here. So um, the nice thing about the resources folder is that anything that you have in here, and if you set up Webpack correctly and you compile it, it'll end up in your public directory, which is the next folder up here. And we'll close this welcome blade file. Next up is the public directory. So within this public directory, you'll have various files. So um, this file is your entry point into the application, like visually seeing the application. You can add additional files here. So you could have any published resources from this folder inside of this public file. All right, so just note that that's good for things like, you know, fonts, icons, images, graphics. Um, you know, any kind of thing you want to add, like your sitemap, et cetera, would end up inside of your public directory. Uh, the next directory up here, I want to close this robot.txt file, is your localization folder or language where you keep your, um, uh, any kind of translations. Um, this lang directory is where you would keep those files. What may be interesting to note was, I believe that this lang directory was at one point previous to Laravel 8 it was also placed in here. So I think they just pulled this out of the resources directory and then moved it up to here. Uh, so the scaffolding or the structure is a little bit different. So, um, but I think the functionality behind this is exactly the same. So you're free to modify any of these files uh, within this directory. So um, I think the newest thing here too was they've added this like uh, en.json file to help with translations and stuff like that. But we'll get to that at a later point, but just note that the language uh, directory is related to hold all your applications language files. And we're gonna take a look at the database directory. So inside of here, this is where Laravel would try to keep um, some of its database factories. So think of a factory as a place where you can define some of your default state for your Laravel models. And a model is basically a class that kind of defines a table in Laravel. So um, you'll have your models, you'll have your factories, you'll have your migrations. Uh, migrations is kind of like um, maybe like version control for, for um, you know, database tables and stuff like that. So you create your migrations here uh, using the specific class and you'd have a schema. And within that you'd have some of your actual, um, you know, table uh, columns and rows, and then you can up those, which would mean to run them or load them. And then you can remove them with the down functionality. So we'll get into migrations later on, but um, also note that there's a thing here called cedars and cedars are kind of a great way to kind of uh, pre-populate your table with a lot of data. Um, as you can see, this is related to the factory. It takes the states from the factory. It runs it into the cedars and the cedars then populate the tables with whatever amount of data that you want. 
So that is pretty much the database directory. Next up, and probably one of the most important ones I feel um, in the structure next to database and resources is the config area. So this is where you would have files or you know packages that you've imported that would bring in some kind of file that would allow you to configure that package. And a lot of Laravel's configuration is listed inside of this directory. This is where you're gonna have a lot of control around configuring specific pieces of your application. So let's close this up. And we did talk about this. We touched on the uh, bootstrap file. So this is called the app directory. And within this, we talked about models. This is where you'll have your models. So for instance, here is a model, a user model, and um, this user model is also related to um, this database uh, factory. So these things work hand in hand, uh, and it's also related to this migration for the user table. So this is what is created when you run this migration. It uses this factory, and the model here is created above uh, in this folder. So now you'll notice that Laravel keeps this fairly light and in Laravel 9, um, they have removed a bunch of folders that were usually uh, default. And that's a good idea because I believe as you use the items or you pull in the things that you need, then those folders become apparent. So there's a list of other folders, like if you're writing rules, there'd be a rules folder. If you're doing events, an events folder would pop up. If you were doing anything with jobs or listeners or mail, the appropriate folder would pop up. So note that this is also dependent on how you call um, a command, you know, in the artisan command line to generate what you need for the folder uh, or the item that you're going to work with. Uh, next up is the HTTP folder. So this is where your controllers would go. Um, there's, there's like, you know, so many different ways to scaffold a Laravel project and organize it in a way. Um, these are not all set in stone and depending on how and what you're building, whether you're using microservices or you have a specific type of build or your paradigm you're following, um, these might not all fall into line. But when you're starting out, um, you know, you want to probably keep those things within the appropriate directories until you get more comfortable with where things are and you can move them around or manipulate them how you see fit. There is no restriction into where these things can be. You just have to make sure that you're able to call them and access them and the functionality kind of stays the same. Down here, you'll see within the this uh, HTTP directory, there's middleware. We'll get into middleware a little bit later. Um, think of middleware as in between a function or a process or something like that. Um, think of it along those lines if that helps. Um, you have your kernel file. And you know, this is the global kernel for the middleware stack. So this is associated with the middleware. There is another kernel file. And I believe that kernel file is inside of this folder, sorry, in this folder called console. And uh, this is usually to do more around commands. So when you create your own custom commands using Artisan, uh, you'll reach for this one and exceptions. This one kind of gets overlooked when you're new, but um, this is where you would write any kind of exceptions or error handling. Uh, I think by default, the error handling, and I went from the bottom up for a reason, it gets, you know, kind of pushed towards your logs and, you know, the log files, but you can write any kind of custom error handling that you see for your application uh, and you want to touch inside of this folder here. So you can make things uh, reportable or you could do, um, you know, error handling services such as Sentry or Bugsnag or Flare or any of those things, if you're familiar with that. Um, that pretty much covers it. That was a long video, and I really wanted you guys to kind of have a really thorough grasp over this. Uh, do take the time to rewatch this if you got a little confused and kind of figure out, you know, where these things are. Because as we touch on each piece and in detail, you'll become a little more intimately familiar with what they do and how they work and where to reach for these things. Um, it'll get to the point where uh, I like to work in kind of like a minimalist kind of thing here. So from time to time, I will actually just know where those files are and what I'm working with. And inside of Visual Studio's code, or if you're using another platform, I tend to reach for PHP Storm depending on what I'm doing but you will have to get used to the keyboard shortcuts and try to figure out where things are, uh, you know, how to open a file, how to look for a file. 
And in this case, if I wanted to look for something, I'll say like the web.php file, by knowing the structure and the directory, I know where that file is and where to look for it and what you know it affects and so on and so forth. But you know, it takes practice and I want you guys to get used to, you know, learning the Visual Studio shortcuts or the keyboard shortcuts for your application or IDE so that you can become um, a little more proficient and it'll just become second nature and you'll just find yourself, um, you know, reaching for things very quickly and getting things done. So uh, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you like that. Um, do take your time and go over this video once again and just get used to that if you're new. If you're not new, well, this is just review and some things have changed in Laravel, especially in the LTS version. But I think a lot of the functionality around some of the folders and calling components and how things work are still the same. So stay tuned for the next video. And I hope you guys are well, and I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave your comments below and tell me your thoughts. And I will see you guys. Take care.